If you have a school district issued iPad and you use a school district issued Apple ID, it may be useful from time to time to back up your iCloud data from your school district issued Apple ID to a personal Apple ID. There's lots of times this makes sense. For instance, if you're graduating or leaving the district, or if you just want to make sure you have a copy of your best work on your personal Apple ID. So this video is going to show you how to do that. Step one, of course, is creating your personal Apple ID if you don't already have one. This can be done by visiting appleid.apple.com and creating your Apple ID. Once you have your personal Apple ID set up, you're going to go into the settings on your district issued Apple ID. We're going to move up to where you signed into your iCloud account. And we're going to click on iCloud. From there, we're going to scroll down to iCloud Backup, making sure that the backup is on and that you have a recent backup completed. Make sure to save your data using iCloud and the automatic backup. Once you have a backup created, we can go back to where we're signed into our Apple ID, and then we can click Sign Out. It's recommended that you keep copies of anything that you want in your new iCloud on the device and then click Sign Out. Now you can see that I'm not signed into any Apple ID. So we're gonna click on that again, and we're gonna enter our new personal Apple ID. If it's your first time signing in, you'll have to sign into the Terms and Conditions. Now that I'm signed into my personal Apple ID on my school district device, it's important to note this. If you have a school district issued Apple ID, it should offer you up to 200 gigabytes of storage. However, a personal Apple ID that is free only gives you five gigabytes of storage. So if you have more than five gigabytes of storage, it may not be able to back up all of your files. At this point, it's important to go through and get rid of the things that you don't want to back up that are taking you over your five gigabytes of free storage on iCloud. Now I'm going to click into my iCloud. I'm going to scroll down to my iCloud backup. And I'm going to run my backup again. It's important to see what is being backed up. I can also turn on anything that I might not want to back up. For instance, I'm really just interested in my photos and my iCloud Drive. I don't need my contacts, calendars, Safari, reminders, or any of these other items. Once I've gone through that full list, I can reduce a bunch of my storage that way. I can return to my iCloud backup and back up just the things that I need. Give it some time. It'll take a little bit of time to back up, depending on the size of your backup. And from there, you can check what was backed up using a web browser. Now on any browser, whether you're on a PC or a Mac, you can visit iCloud.com. This is like Google Drive for Apple, and it allows us to see what resources are backed up in the cloud, even if we don't have an Apple device at the time to sign into. So I'm just gonna sign in. Once I've signed in to iCloud.com, from any browser, I can see what resources have been backed up. Let's just check and make sure my photos are in place. Great, all my photos are in place. I also have access to other things I might have backed up, such as particular numbers files or keynote files. And that's all you need to do to make sure that you have your data backed up in a personal Apple ID. Then, when you get your next Apple device, you can sign in with that personal Apple ID and your resources will be available to you on that device.